Labor is under fire over its pledge to fund 24-7 nurses in aged care homes. During the election campaign, Anthony Albanese promised to fund 24-7 nurses in aged care facilities. It was a promise he made day after day after day. 24-7 nurses. 24-7 nurses. 24-7. 24 nurses. Nurses 24-7. 24-7. Nurses. 24-7. Nurse in a nursing home 24-7. 24-7. Put the nurses back in the nursing homes 24-7. You know how many nurses you'll need in order to deliver that just that one promise. Look, the sector will grow. And Labor said they'd have this in place by July 2023. That's now three and a half weeks away. But the aged care minister, Annika Wells, can't identify when or if this promise will be fulfilled. Your clear promise was to have all uh, aged care facilities, 24 seven registered nurses by July. Yeah. Um, the coalition at the time said that's not gonna happen. And now we know it's not going to happen. Yeah. How many are going to have 24 seven nursing? How many aren't? Yeah, so July. we don't require people to report on their 24-7 nursing policy until 1 July starts. So you don't know? So that will open. We, we don't have exact figures. We've got, we've got various kind of... Um, the department's obviously in touch with, with the 2,700 facilities we have in the country. Is there a guesstimate? We have a sense. We have a working sense, but it honestly changes... What's the working sense? ..day to day. I wouldn't want to reveal it because it changes day to day. And it went on, and it wasn't pretty. All right, let's bring in my panel now. Sky News host, Paul Murray, and Liz Stora. <laughs> well, I mean, Ben Fordham on radio made the point today, Paul, that, you know, that was like almost an episode from Utopia. Yeah. That, like, it, it doesn't get any... It's, it's just embarrassing. When you hear how many times Anthony Albanese makes that commitment, you think this is something that they will deliver. Well, they passed the legislation, but... They told us, like, weeks into this policy that aged care homes can apply to, for it not to apply to them, right? So it's not going to be as, as total as was made out during the election. But then they said they'd do something about cost of living. Um, you know, that doesn't apply either. Um, what was ludicrous about that performance was she had a number, she knows the number isn't enough, which is why she wouldn't say it, but then pretended to say, oh, well, I can't say it because the number changes every day. Yeah, but there's a band. Are you halfway there? Are you three quarters Give of the us way a ball there? Part. Yeah, and then when when Spizzy quite correctly turns around and says, "Well, what's the last number you knew? What was yes. the yesterday?" Yes. Oh well, that was a Sunday. We can't possibly all too clever Please. by half. And look, this is the stuff that when you're flying high on the poles doesn't matter, mm -hmm. but when you start to wobble, it, it speeds up big problems when those problems start to kick in. 100%. Yeah. And, Liz, why does this matter? I mean, having 24-7 nurses in aged care, this was one of Labor's central commitments because the aged care um, issue became very politicised. It was one of their big attacks against mm. the Morrison government. Yeah. And the thing is, when this came down, it was one of the recommendations in the Royal Commission into Aged Care... It was Labor themselves who shot themselves in the foot here because they were actually given in the recommendation by the, the resultant report a lot more time to put this in place, but they wanted to look like rock stars. They're the ones who chose July 2023. And it's one of those policies, and I think a lot of people would agree, that doesn't seem that onerous. When you consider a lot of these people in aged care homes are ailing, mm. it makes sense that you would have one it's a popular RN policy on yeah. site around the clock. Just one. Yeah. Surely that's not too onerous. And yet that's the excuses that have been levied against this. Oh, well, it was just impossible. It was so onerous. Whereas I think for the average Australian, hearing this one measure... The idea of having one registered nurse on site, one registered nurse per one registered aged care facility... Right. Just makes sense. ..is perfectly reasonable. Yeah. But as you're reporting today, again, congratulations, how good is she? Um, is also this scenario where when you're in opposition, you stitch together a whole bunch of different constituencies to form a coalition to get yourself across the line. As we saw with your reporting, you're willing to hit as low as possible, as hard as possible, and in things like aged care or the economy, you overpromise so you can stand there and say, here's the 10 things we're going to do on day one. But yeah. guess what? All the easy stuff, if it was done, would have been done by the well, last mob. Paul, this is actually yeah. what I want to ask you, because you are covering this on your show, but not many other people in the media are. 
Labor's election promises, they, they couldn't have been more clear-cut. Mm. We will bring down the cost of living. And it is, and, and you know, no one blames Labor entirely or even, you know, maybe it's, maybe it's I don't know, 15% of their fault. It is not their fault, but they, they knew when they made that promise that they couldn't make that promise because inflation was already rising. We'd already had one interest rate rise during the election campaign. It was clear they couldn't make the promise to bring down the cost of living, but that was their central election promise and people believe them. And, well, and the same with this as well, the, well, the aged care nurses. Well, again, how would the media have reacted to Tony Abbott's stop the boats if one year later yes. there were more boats arriving no than boats when he was elected? Stopped. Could yeah. you imagine the freak out, right? Yeah. Albanese, apart from all the other messaging, his own Twitter feed, he decided to... It's still there. A Labor government will lower the cost of living. 12 months later, no one can say that's the case. No. And as a baker's dozen is 13, an Albo dozen is 11 of interest rate rises that have happened since. Their reaction when one took place, it was a cost of living freak out. Well, what do you say now when it's, when mm. it's uh, a dozen? How do we have a scenario where this government, and I know a new government resets all of its relationships with the media and, and one of the things that's desperately important about the media is access and a whole bunch of people who didn't get a good night uh, WhatsApp message from the Prime Minister uh, <laughs> who under the last one now get one from this one so they all want to keep the new car smell. Yeah. But there's a smell here. Mm. They are not doing what they promised. They are screwing over people, including, I was looking at this today, the extreme majority of the five suburbs in this country where your home loan is starting to go into arrears, all Labor areas. Yeah. Yeah. They're yeah. supposedly the right. champions of these people, yet as their budget proved, they have policies that screw these people over and because the media don't know these people, other than when but it's time to go and interview them, yeah. they roll on and they don't talk about it.